Hi, my name is Pam Hart, and I'm Executive Director here at the Center for Animal Law Studies. And joining me today is Professor Delcy Winders, who is Director of our Animal Law Litigation Clinic, the first and only litigation clinic devoted exclusively to farmed animals. And we have some breaking news for you here today. I'm so glad you could join us. Can you tell us a little bit about the lawsuit that your clinic just filed? Yeah, so uh, the Animal Law Litigation Clinic just filed its second lawsuit. So this comes on the heels of our first lawsuit, which challenges the USDA's recent um, deregulation of pig slaughter. And what the second lawsuit does is challenges the Secretary of Agriculture and the Department of Agriculture's long-standing failure to protect um, what we call downed pigs. These are pigs who are too sick or injured to even stand up or walk at the slaughterhouse. And despite long-standing congressional mandates and efforts by the plaintiffs in this lawsuit, the agency continues to allow these pigs to be slaughtered for human consumption. And there are about a million pigs every year who arrive at the slaughterhouse in this condition. As you can imagine, they pose really serious food safety risks as well as um, humane handling issues. These animals suffer tremendously at the slaughterhouse when folks are trying to get them to move and they're just unable to. Thank you for that. And are you working with any other groups or organizations on this lawsuit? Yeah, so um, the Animal Law Litigation Clinic is uh, representing a coalition of seven organizations in this lawsuit. So the plaintiffs here are Farm Sanctuary, the Animal Legal Defense Fund, Animal Outlook, which was previously Compassion Over Killing, Animal Welfare Institute, Compassion and World Farming, Farm Forward, and Mercy for Animals. So you mentioned early on that this is your second lawsuit and you made a reference to the first lawsuit. Can you tell us a little bit more about the first lawsuit and how these two complement each other? Yeah, so the first lawsuit was really focused on a brand new rule by the current administration to deregulate pig slaughter and it focuses on two aspects of that deregulation. The first is lifting uh, the limit on how many pigs who can be killed per hour at the slaughterhouse. So previously, for many years, under federal regulation, a slaughterhouse could kill up to 1,106 pigs each hour. That's already a huge number of animals. And what the government did with this new rule was just completely remove that limit. So slaughterhouses can kill as many pigs as they want per hour. In addition, it compounded that uh, problem by removing USDA inspectors, re dramatically reducing the number of inspectors in the slaughterhouse, and removing them from the front lines um, to make sure that animals are not being inhumanely handled. So that's the first lawsuit. It um, intersects with somewhat the new lawsuit, but the new lawsuit is really focused on very long-standing failures by the agency. So way before the Trump administration decided to deregulate pig slaughter, the agency was under a mandate to protect specifically um, downed pigs and other animals. They're also often referred to as non-ambulatory non livestock. So in 2002, almost two decades ago, Congress amended the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act precisely because it was concerned about non-ambulatory animals and the humane handling issues and the food safety issues that they implicate. They amended the um, act to say, Sir, Secretary of Agriculture, you need to study this issue, you need to report to Congress on it, and then based on what you find, you need to promulgate regulations. The agency never did that for pigs. It did ban the slaughter of uh, down cows, but despite the fact that the same issues are implicated by pigs, both humane handling issues, and I would like to talk a little bit more in detail what I mean by that, um, but also food safety issues, they just have refused to do anything as to pigs, not, not just regulate, but even report on it and investigate it. So our clients, after uh, waiting more than a decade for the USDA to follow this mandate, petitioned the government and said, hey, you need to ban the slaughter of down pigs for human consumption for exactly the same reasons you banned the slaughter of down cows, um, going into great detail with thousands and thousands of pages of evidence about the humane handling and food safety violations. And the government sat on that petition for more than five years. And then um, just this past September, it said, nope, we are denying this. And in doing so, disregarded much of the evidence that had been presented to us. And it just so happens that the day after they denied the petition is the day they announced that they were gonna deregulate pig slaughter even further. 
Okay, so that covers the two cases, how they intersect with each other. You filed your second lawsuit today. What are the next steps? What, we, what can we anticipate in the coming months? So the government has 60 days to respond to our lawsuit. And given what we've seen, I've been involved in uh, more than a dozen challenges against the USDA for its failure to protect animals. And almost in every case, what we see happen is that the government comes in and, and argues that the case should be dismissed because the animal protection groups don't have standing. And we have very good standing arguments here um, on behalf of our organizations who have spent huge amounts of resources trying to protect these animals who the government is supposed to be protecting. So um, we will in all likelihood have to litigate that motion to dismiss, which is unfortunate because these human ha humane handling and food safety violations will continue until we're able to get a hearing on the merits. And just to give a little detail on what, what those violations look like. So we're talking about um, roughly a million pigs who arrive at the slaughterhouse every year in the United States who are too sick or injured to stand or walk. And that doesn't even account for those who become unable to stand or walk after they've arrived. And these animals, there's a huge incentive to force them to get up because their flesh can be sold for more money if they do stand up. So they are routinely kicked, beaten, prodded with electric prods. Um, I've, I've read through USDA's own documents of these instances and it reads like a parade of horrors. It's actually absolutely horrific. Um, these animals are also often um, just set aside to languish for long periods of time in the hopes that they might get up and then be able to be sold for more money. And USDA has also documented they're often overcrowded, they're often trampled by the pigs who can walk, and in many instances they'll squeal out in pain and distress when they're being trampled, they're denied adequate water, they're denied shelter from the elements. In one instance we had a pig who was shivering and squealing and he was in a pen that was negative six degrees and his ears were frostbitten. Um, so that's what this means for the animals. And then in terms of food safety, it's well documented, which should come as no surprise, that animals who are too sick to stand up or walk have a higher likelihood of carrying diseases that are transmissible to humans, including salmonella, campylobacter, yersinia, listeria, swine flu, the list goes on and on. This work is so important and you're doing this all through the litigation clinic, you're doing it with students. Uh, you recently launched this clinic in the fall of 2019. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? How did you decide to focus exclusively on farmed animals? And why is it so important that you keep this focus? Yes, yeah, so um, the Animal Law Litigation Clinic, as you said, was launched in fall 2019 at Lewis and Clark Law School and at the Center for Animal Law Studies, which is truly the epicenter of animal law in the world. So they've had an animal law clinic as part of their animal law program for more than a decade. And um, we're in a spot to be able to expand their clinical offerings. So we became the only law school in the world with two animal law clinics. And we were able to have one that focuses students in on this particular issue of factory farming and the suffer the suffering that animals endure as a result of factory farming. Um, we have about 30% of students who come to Lewis and Clark Law School come because they're interested in animal law and a huge number of them are motivated specifically around the factory farming issues for the animals as well as the environment and, and humans. Um, so we wanted to offer something to students to, to, to funnel that passion while also giving them really nitty gritty hands-on litigation skills which you absolutely are doing. It's been a short time since you've been open and now you've just filed your second lawsuit. Yeah. So for anyone who's watching this interview right now, we have the breaking news, you've just filed this lawsuit. If you're a student, if you're an attorney, if you're an advocate, what can they do specifically to support your clinic, this case, and more generally, what can people do to support farmed animals? Yeah, so to support the clinic and support the case, we absolutely need your support. We rely on donations, so I would encourage you to donate to the Center for Animal Law Studies and to the clinic specifically. Um, we will put your money to good use, I promise, um, both advocating for animals and teaching the next generation to do so um, for their entire careers. Um, but also you can just, just help spread the word. We wanna get the word out about these issues, about the government's failure to comply with most basic mandates, just minimal protections for these animals. I would also encourage you, if you eat these animals, to reconsider doing that, if not for their own sake and because of the handling stuff I talked about, for your own sake, for, for the, the foodborne illness risks and other risks that you're facing.
Thank you, Jesse. That's a yeah. perfect answer. We so appreciate everything that you're doing for us, the clinic, farmed animals, and we look forward to staying in touch. We will be bringing you updates on this case and more of the important work being done in the animal law litigation clinic. So thank you for joining us and thank you all for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.